today we're flying again it's a little bit more overcast but hopefully we're going to jump on board one of these helicopters but this time actually get out take a look around and hopefully see some snow up close although i've not got appropriate footwear on for traipsing about in snow chopper now. I'm not wearing the right shoes. Look at this. Jeans and trainers up the top here. We're actually at the top of Coronet Peak. And our pilot's just, um, he's just doing some selfies with the other people here. He just bumped the helicopter down into the snow to keep it nice and stable. And yeah, look at this. Look at this view. So now we are literally on top of the mountain with all of this behind us and very, very wet socks. But this is wicked. You don't tend to come up here on your own in one of these choppers. They put a few groups of people with you. The other guys here, they're all having a snowball fight. Also, um, snow depth, snow depth official measure. <laughs> I'm getting involved in the snowball fight now. Uh, official snow depth measurement, I'd say at least a foot. There's at least a foot of snow up here now. And um, even though it's warming up, it's probably only about 10, 11 degrees out here at the moment. There's still quite a good base of snow this time of the year. Wow, this is very cool. One disadvantage of the SR22. Can't do that with it. All right, the other thing you'll notice as well, as I clamber around here, the other thing is obviously my um, headset's not working. I don't know whether you picked that up on the way out, so I can't actually talk on the way down. But please, as we jump back into the helicopter now, enjoy the beautiful visuals of flying from the top of Coronet Peak all the way back down to Queenstown Airport again. Wow, what a privilege. You have to do this. You have to do this. My pleasure, mate. My pleasure. We'll try and make our way out towards a little lake called Lake Luna. Okay. And see if we can't get out that way and then come back down through via uh, the Queenstown Lakes. give some context to what we're doing here. We're actually on a road trip heading out to a place called Wanaka. Now, all you aviators out there might know the name Wanaka. You might recognize it. There's a 
quite a well-known air show here in New Zealand called Warbirds over Wanaka. It's not on at the moment, but as the name suggests, you can tell there's a lot of old vintage flying aircraft that uh, fly down there at Wanaka. Awesome air show, I've heard. I've never been. I would love to go down one day, but we're just going to go to Wanaka to check it out. It's a beautiful place to go and a great drive over the mountains as well, near Coronet Peak, where we've been the last couple of days up in the air, but this time down on the ground. But you go through this place, a place called Arrowtown, which is stopping for a coffee. Looks like an old Wild West town. This used to be a settlement in the Gold Rush era. And they've kind of preserved it to make it look like how it was back in the day. It's very cool. Light radar there. Yeah. We've just stopped off, we're on the road from where we started off this morning from Arrowtown, now on the way to Wanaka, but almost at the top of the hill you can stop and you get this tremendous view over the valley. Now a lot of people are stopping here to take pictures of the beautiful scenery and the mountains, but if you're a bit of an aviation tragic like a few of us here, you can actually see all the way down to Queenstown Airport and when they're doing one of the visual approaches down the valleys here, you actually get the aircraft coming in Almost, it looks like pretty much the same level, if not just above, before hooking a left on the final turn and heading into the runway. We've just seen the Jetstar flight from Wellington coming in. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, just seen the Jetstar flight from Wellington and now we're waiting for, who are we waiting for? We're waiting for Air New Zealand flight 603 from Wellington as well. <laughs> Have you got him? Uh, he's 11 kilometers. had to make a quick stop because the view was so nice so everyone's just getting that perfect Instagram moment also any of you chopper pilots know what these guys do he's just hovering near the cliff we have no idea what he's, what he's actually doing surveying it's not a rescue chopper okay. Where the water is I'm not going to go fully in because the water here in this lake comes off all those mountains in the background. You see all that snow? That ends up here. So my feet, I can't really feel my feet at the moment. But man, it's worth it. This is Lake Wanaka then. So we were just in the town of Wanaka, got some lunch. We're here on the banks of the lake. There's the fourth largest lake in New Zealand. And then 10 internet points, if you can name one other of the top five lakes in New Zealand. In terms of size, like not in terms of how cool they are. All right, time's up. If you said any one of these lakes, including Lake Wakatipu, which we were flying over in one of the last videos on this channel, then congratulations, you know your New Zealand lakes. Whilst I would love to spend the whole afternoon just wading through these crystal clear waters, we've got to get back to Queenstown because we've got a four o'clock booking this afternoon on, well, let's just say the pace of this video is about to change entirely.
about 10 centimetres of water to get through. There's no propellers underneath. We're pushed along by two water jet units. So same thing as a jet ski. You suck up water from under the boat, blow it out the back at a rate of about 800 litres a second. That was awesome, well worth doing. Definitely recommend you do that. One pro tip, if you're gonna sit in the front seat, don't have your wallet in your pocket, because <laughs> everything gets wet. That was brilliant.